There's another area I would like to cover more in detail, and that's the variables that are involved in each of our circuits. We have in our circuits three variables we must work with. The first one is voltage. The second one is current. The third one is resistance. Those three variables can be explained by Ohm's law. Ohm's law states that the voltage in our circuit is equal to the current times the resistance. This states that one volt is required to cause one amp to flow through one ohm of resistance. Now, those three variables, E represents voltage or electromotive force. And the unit of measure is a volt. I represents our current. I stands for intensity, by the way. And the unit of measure is an ampere. Resistance. The unit of measure of resistance is an ohm. Now, power we will cover in our second year. The symbol for power is P, and the unit of measure of real power is a watt. We'll spend much more time on power. Now, a circuit must be in a closed loop. We can represent the source voltage on our circuit as being a cell, a single cell of a battery. Uh, in this case, I would have, uh, uh, so I'll put two cells in there. In this case, we have our negative terminal on the top, our positive terminal on the bottom. This is a schematic symbol for a battery, and uh, of course the battery is direct current. Current flows only in one direction. If I draw out a circuit, and I'll put a switch in this circuit, I'll leave it open. If I show a resistance in there, it will look like this. This is a symbol for a resistor, and then we would come on back to our source. Now, with this circuit, the way I have it drawn, my, my negative terminal is on top here. That means then that current flows from negative to positive. If I close this circuit in, I would then have a current flow because I would have my conductors, I would have my load, my resistance, I would have a source. I have to have a source voltage, I have to have my wires, and I have to have a load. My current flow in this case would be in this particular direction, through my resistance and then back towards my source. If I was to label this resistor for polarity, current flows from negative to positive, this would be my negative side, this would be my positive. Now, if I have an applied voltage, I could show that symbol like this. I could say E sub A for applied, or I could write E sub T for total voltage. My current in this circuit could be measured by the use of an ammeter. In this case, I would show it like this. I would have a circle with an A. I would represent the current in that circuit by I, and if in this case I'd be referring to total voltage, I could uh, refer to I sub T. My resistance in this circuit, I have one resistor in this case, 
I can label that R1. Now I'm showing my current by my ammeter. My applied voltage is represented by my E sub A. My resistor as R1. Now, throughout this circuit, I will have a current flow. My current flows through my resistor. I'm going to get a voltage drop. I can measure that voltage drop by the use of a voltmeter. And I'll represent that with a V and a circle with a V. And the thing you want to remember is that voltage, you always measure voltage across the circuit. In other words, the way I have this voltmeter applied to that resistor, I would measure the voltage drop across there. You always measure voltage across the circuit and current into the circuit. Okay? Now, current flow. Like I say, it takes one volt to cause one amp to flow through one ohm of resistance. When we get into math, we'll do a lot of work with Ohm's law. We'll work with the algebra of equations and so on, so you can understand how to work with, with formulas. You'll see where I need to have known to me two variables to find an unknown. We'll do more work with that later. Now, current, when we have current flowing through a circuit, we have electrons flowing through the circuit. Now, how many electrons would that be? There is a term we like to use, a unit of measure we like to use, which is called a coulomb. A coulomb of electrons. A coulomb of electrons represents 6.28 times 10 to the 18th power electrons. In other words, this is a quantity of electrons. If I have that quantity of electrons go through a specific point in my circuit, in one second, I have one amp represented. In other words, one amp equals one coulomb in one second. This is a unit of measure for your current flow. One other fact that I would like to bring out that's particularly important was when I showed you the transparencies, I talked about a condition where the electrons have magnetic fields around them, a lot like the Earth would have a magnetic field around it. This flow of electrons is our current flow. This flow of electrons through a circuit gives us two, two effects which are particularly important. One is the heat effect that we get from, from electrons flow, flowing through the circuit. And the other is the magnetic. We get both of those effects when current flows through a circuit. You'll see when we get into ammeters and so on where the basic ammeter, all meters, or that goes all measure current. It might read out in volts, amps, or whatever the case might be. However, the, the meter operates, the basic meter movement operates off the, the effect of current flowing through a circuit. And like I say, it's in the form of heat or, or a magnetic field. Another area I would like to spend a little more time on, and that's, that's this, the resistance if uh, if I if I uh, know my value of voltage and my current, I can determine or calculate out what my resistance is going to be in the circuit. I like to use proportion. When we talk proportion, we're talking about the relationship of, say, two variables to one another. If the effect is direct 
In other words, if I raise one value, the other raise, we talk about that as being direct. If I raise one value and the other value lowers, then that's an inverse effect. Uh, for example, here, if I, if I want to refer to the relationship between current and resistance, in other words, if my voltage remains the same, then if I raise my value of resistance, my value of current will drop. That's an inverse relationship. Another application of uh, proportionality is if my resistance stays the same and I raise my value, my current raises, then that's a direct proportion. So we're going to use proportion many times. Another example of uh, the use of proportion would be if I increase the diameter of, of the wire, of the wire. Uh, in other words, the size of the wire increases, then my resistance lowers. Now that's an inverse relationship. If I increase the diameter of the wire and I lower my opposition to current flow, that's inverse. Or if I have a conductor, I increase the length of my conductor the resistance also increases, then that's a direct relationship. If I increase the length and it increases my resistance, that's a direct, direct relationship.